Good morning, it's Roger Gilbert here in the Rongo Rongo Live video studio. Uh, and we're talking Aquafeed this morning. This is uh, International Aquafeed magazine. Uh, I'm the publisher of International Aquafeed and I'm privileged to have today on Rongo Rongo Live, Nathan Pine Carter. Now, Nathan is the CEO of a company that we all know, Ace Aquatech, and he's joining us today to explain some of his company's developments and products. But until 2012, it was a family business when Nathan took over as CEO. So without further ado, uh, welcome, Nathan. Thank you very much. Nice to be here. Uh, Nathan, uh, you took over the business uh, in 2012. Uh, can you tell us what's been happening since? Apparently quite a lot. Yeah, it's a very exciting time for Ace Aquatech. Um, as you say, it was a family-run business. You know, we were um, developing a, a few small systems at the back of a, a garage, more or less, when we first started out. Um, when I came in in 2012, um, when we took a, a fresh look at all of the products and, um, and started to think about uh, how we could improve them and uh, make them more relevant for um, aquaculture worldwide. And uh, very fortunate to say we've um, we've had uh, investment from AquaSpark uh, over the last 18 months, and then more recently Chris van der Kaal um, from 4J Studios uh, in Dundee. Uh, he's a, an entrepreneur, um, well known for the uh, the Minecraft um, uh, franchise, oh, yeah. um, and, uh, and and AquaSpark as well, very well um, known for their um, blue investments in uh, technologies that can help. Uh, improve the sustainability of agriculture. Yeah, going worldwide is quite a challenge uh, uh, from a family business uh, in, in such a short period of time. What are the products? I mean, this is the, the reason why we're talking is these products that you're developing are quite uh, specialized and, and quite innovative. So what are these, uh, this equipment and products that you're, you're focusing on that is going to take you globally in the, in the fish farming industry? Well, we started out very early on with um, electric fish dunners and uh, deterrents for fish farms using acoustics. And when I came into the company, I mean, I, I suppose I've always taken more of a creative approach to product development. I mean, I'll take a look at what's going on in other industries, um, see if we can apply something similar, if it has a, a practical use for aquaculture, and then try to find, um, you know, partnerships, people who are experts in those sort of areas and, uh, and work together with the best um, minds to provide and create the best product. And we do a similar thing with academics as well. Uh, so we have a wide variety of um, uh, universities that we work with, from uh, Stirling to St Andrews University and, uh, and further afield as well. Um, but yeah, we, we started out in electric fish stunning, and that was mainly because we saw that there was a, a welfare issue. We started with, um, with trout. Trout in the UK back in 2004 was largely just being thrown onto, um, onto ice, into, um, uh, in, into bins. Um, and the supermarkets were looking really for a technology supplier who could provide a, an improvement to that scenario. And we've seen, you know, since um, the first electric solar that we produced back in 2004, we've seen a lot of interest similarly um, in Greece with their CBAS, where they have a similar sort of approach. And now as we expand out, you know, into the sort of the Asian markets, you see that, um, you know, the, the, the supermarkets are really pushing um, yeah. forward with uh, with other species as well, like Pangasius and, mm. uh, and uh, Tilapia. Yeah. So um, it, it's something we've always had at the heart of what we do, is trying to improve fish welfare. And if I look at what we're doing this year, I mean, we've got a really exciting uh, year that we're going into. We've got a number of um, grant projects which are just uh, completing, um, a lot of them that have been covered with government grants uh, like CFAS. Um, when we had our stunners in place, we had a system there that could stun electrically in water, um, so there was no handling, no contact of the fish, and so it was a very low stress um, method. The fish are basically pumped up through a pipe and they come out the other side stunned. The trouble <coughs> with that whole process was that we were reliant on other systems uh, pumping the fish, which were quite variable. So that could be very stressful indeed and cause damage uh, to the fish before they even got anywhere you know, near the end of the, um, uh, the production line. Uh, Similarly, on the bleeding side, and there's huge variability as to what happens to your fish after they've been stunned. Um, and some going into sort of homemade devices, which are very, you know, variable in terms of actually hitting an aorta and bleeding the fish out. And then right at the beginning of the process, we've got um, various levels of um, crowding. You know, some people are doing uh, crowding over huge periods of time, much stress to the fish, um, low oxygen levels in the water. Yeah. So you just... Yeah. We were providing one 
element of the um, of basically what was happening in the final stages of a fish's life and all the way from the cage to the processing factory there's opportunity there for you know measures to cause a huge impact on the final quality of what ends up on our dinner plate mm. and for me it was thinking you know imaginatively yes we've, we've we seem to have uh, cracked the uh, the stunning element, but what can we do to improve yeah. the efficacy rate on bleeding? What can we do to reduce the stress during pumping? Yeah. And what can we do to create a better yeah. um, crowding solution? So we took that whole um, area and we started to sort of siphon off elements. So we've just developed a new pumping solution, which um, is on this uh, CFAS grant, which, um, which uses water jets to create suction in a pipe to then create a flow and a, a gentle process for moving the fish from the pens into the, the stunner and then into the final um, slaughter process. Yeah. On another CFAS grant, we've got a, a water jet bleeder, which uses um, uh, robotics and uh, machine vision yeah. to detect which orientation the fish is in and then to use a high power water jet to automatically bleed the fish. Um, so yeah, that, that's just taking the, um, the slaughter slide. Uh, but. Um, you know, we've got similar things going on in uh, in AI on the the cage-based equipment. So we started out there with with just acoustics. You know, not with um. <laughs> sorry, my phone going off. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Keep going. We turn off your phone. Um, so yeah, we started off with a relationship with um, Neptune Sonar, who is a military uh, transducer manufacturer. Um, but as we started to look at how fish were being grown, you see the uh, the importance of. Um, of a whole load of uh, other elements there. You need to be tracking water quality. You need to be ensuring that the fish are getting the right level of lighting. Um, mm. You need to make sure that um, it's not just reliant on individual fish farmers to be looking for disease and um, uh, and lice detection. So we then started to take a holistic look at this area as well. And because of the um, a few of the systems that we were working on started to bring in um, AI and uh, the creation of neural networks. So we found ourselves on a, a train then to say, well, actually, can we look at all of the sensors? Could we look at how cameras are being used underwater and you know, not, not do what everybody else is doing, but look at a novel way to approach mm -hmm. those systems. And you know, now um, the creation of these neural networks is fundamental to every single system that we're producing and extracting um, fantastic uh, Images, you know, whether it's lice detection using, you know, novel. Yes, <laughs> Thank you, Siri. <laughs> using novel forms of light, um, or um, or using uh, acoustics to sort of map the distance of fish and provide an accurate biomass measurement. Yeah, it's it's a fantastic time to be working because so much uh, development is going on in different industries. Yeah. And um, you know, it's a great opportunity here to be bringing in novel technologies and look at you know the whole grow out area and the whole slaughter area um you know holistically um and yeah so well, so a very exciting time for us well, well yeah i mean it's uh, there's a lot of areas that it, within that process that you can focus on and what, what i'm hearing quite clearly is that uh, supermarkets from what you say supermarkets and uh, retailers are very interested in the way we are humanely uh, managing the fish from the pond to the processing plant and, and I'm sure that's what's uh, motivating most of, of your developments. Uh, and also, of course, you know, giving the fish uh, uh, a much more um, sympathetic, as it were, uh, approach to the end of their life cycle, um, which I think, you know, food is food. And uh, we have to take, um, uh, take note of, of what consumers or the view of consumers on the way their food is now being produced. Not, it's not just about air miles and, and other things like that. It's, it's also about how we are, we are processing our animals right through, the, through to the end. So, you know, very, very instructive and innovative uh, what's happening in ACE aquaculture. Now, you mentioned, you mentioned global. Um, uh, you've mentioned Southeast Asia. What about areas like, uh, you know, other s salmon producing areas, uh, Canada, for instance, or for Norway, Australia, you know, are you in these areas as well? Yeah, so um, with the, uh, the recent um, investment from Chris and uh, previously Aquaspark, we identified certain areas that we wanted to expand into. So, you know, we have a, a great working relationship in Scotland with all of our customers. I mean, a lot of these innovations wouldn't happen without those um, collaborations and commitment from um, companies to 
you know, put, put uh, money on the, the line, really, and try something new. But they're all very enthusiastic about new developments. Um, and we wanted to go into new regions with the same sort of um, ethos and, uh, and working spirit. We didn't want to just, you know, set up a, a distribution line for our equipment. We wanted to actually um, respond to what the local issues were and uh, to show um, those areas that we're as committed to developing products for them um, as we are in um, Scotland. So critical for us was getting the right regional managers in place, and we've got some fantastic regional managers that come into the company. Um, and the regions we we focus on initially, we've looked at um, well, we now got offices in Australia, uh, in Norway, uh, in Canada, uh, and also in Chile. Mm. And um, again, you know, just exciting to see the growth of the company. I mean, already this year in Scotland, we've gone from five direct employees to you know over. I think we're approaching 25 now in um, oh. in total uh, in the company just this year. So um, you know, as many sort of struggles as the, uh, the the pandemic and COVID situation has has caused, you know, across the world, there's um, you know, for, from our perspective, you know, I think uh, aquaculture seems to be um, you know uh, to be quite good at uh, um, you know overcoming many of the issues, and actually is a critical. Uh, you know, area, and uh, we found you know there's there's more opportunities over the last um, 12 months than uh, ever before. So we're on a, a sort of a, a, an expansion route at the moment. Yeah, really pleased to hear that. And how many uh, systems do you have out there? Do you think uh, globally now? I mean, we've got uh, you know there's a range of different systems, but you know we're in um, we're in the hundreds on. Um, you know, deterrence uh, over a wide uh, geography, um, and you know we're just pushing out a lot of our camera systems. So those are quite new into the market. Um, and on stunners, I mean, we we get we're worldwide in um, in those systems. I mean, we tend not to be focused on um, particular markets there. So yeah. we've, we're you know installing from Greece to Panama to um, you know uh, <laughs> America, all over the place. Right. So it's uh, yeah. Very, very interesting to have this like diversity of um, regions that we're working with. Yeah. Diversity of regions and uh, products that you're putting together in, in, in a chain, in a, in a system, but um, most insightful. And uh, Nathan, look, um, good luck to you. I mean, this is what the industry needs, obviously. And uh, there's, a, there's certainly a demand and it is connecting two vital areas. Uh, so yeah, no, congratulations on what you've done. I know you got an award in Norway for your stunner a couple of years back at, uh, uh, Very much. Uh, at, their, at their exhibition up there. Uh, and, and I think that must have been the start of uh, this process that you're now fully engaged with. But uh, many congratulations and uh, all the best for 2021. I'm pleased the uh, pandemic hasn't slowed you down and the <laughs> expanding and um, Good, more good things to come next year, I'm sure. But um, thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, this is Nathan uh, Pinecarter uh, from Ace Aquatech. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, goodbye from us at uh, the Rongo Rongo Live video studio.